Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I'm IATF qualified daughter having experience of more than 32 years. I'm again back with a very, very interesting topic. And today I'm going to talk about MSA, measurement system analysis. And in MSA, I'm going to talk about NDC, number of distinct categories. Generally, it's a very typical topic for people to understand what exactly is NDC, whether it should be high, whether it should be low, what is the purpose, if it is low, what to do, if it is high, what does it mean? So by the time this video will end, you will understand and all the questions will be answered by that time. Well, in general, if you look around us, when we go to a shop to buy some fruits and in case there is a error of 10 grams, is it important for us? Answer is no. Now think about another scenario, you go to a goldsmith and you want to purchase some gold. In case now the error is 10 grams, is it allowed? Is it possible that you will accept that? The answer is no. Even the error of 1 gram is very expensive. Now think about another scenario, you go to a bank and you want to get some money. Now even if one currency note is less or more, is it acceptable? The answer is no. So that's why for all those things, MSA, measurement system analysis is being conducted. And the objective of MSA study with respect to any industrial scenario is that whenever we are checking a particular component, there can be a lot of variations in that. Now, variations are okay, but then how much is a variation which is attributed because of that measurement system, because of that one euro micrometer that we are using, how much is the error which is coming because of that? So if you know about GRR, which is talking about repeatability and reproducibility, it is talking that it should be 10 or less than 10. Now, to make sure that whatever measurement system that we are using, whether it is right or wrong, there is another terminology that is being checked that is called NDC, number of distinct categories. There is a requirement that it should be 5 or it should be more. If it is less than 5, then there should be a good justification that why it is acceptable. But if it is 2, then we cannot accept that. Now, let's take an example to understand that. Now, if you look into the graph, you will find that uh, there was an instrument which had a least count of 0.01 mm. Now, if you look into the range chart, you will find that there are three points which are going out of the control limit, upper control limit. Now, if you do the same test again by using a different instrument having a least count of 0.001 mm. Now, if you look into the range chart, you will find that now all the points are within the control limit. And why it is happening? Very simple reason. The reason is this, that all the points are coming because now the instrument had that much of capability to see that error. And in case the instrument cannot find out that error or the variation which is in the process, it can result in either type 1 or type 2 error. Wherein we are saying that if part is good, maybe it is rejected or if a part is rejected, it can also be considered to be good. Now that brings another situation here. What to do in case NDC is less than 5? So there are a couple of steps that can be taken. The first step is that we need to look into the, that how we can increase the part variation or how we can decrease the measurement variation, that is GRR. The second point is that we can change the instrument. Maybe we can use a better accuracy instrument. Maybe from a uh, one year we can use a micrometer. That can help. The third, which is very important, not only for NDC but for entire study of MSA, is that how much is the part variation that is coming. So, for example, there is a process in which some parts are coming out and the variation allowed is from 4.8 to 5.2. But if we pick up only pieces from 4.9 to 5.1 and we leave around 4.8 and 5.2, then there is a high possibility that we can get low NDC. But if we increase the parts from you know 4.8 to 5.2, even if it is less or more, if we increase those parts into the study, then there is a high possibility that NDC will improve further. And the fifth very important thing is if you can improve or use an instrument which is a better least count instead of 0.1, 0.01 or maybe 0.001. But that will all depend upon the context and the situation and what we are expecting from that measurement system. So if I do a summary, I talked about NDC, number of distinct categories, which should be 5 or more than 5. And why it is important? So that whatever measurement that we are doing, we should be thinking we have a confidence that yes it is able to measure that variation which is there in the process and in case it is less then there are certain things that needs to be done so that we can improve it.
well my next video will again be in the same series where i'm going to talk more about msa and in the next video i'm going to talk about the source of variation which is swipe s w i p e so i'm going to talk more about that regularly i'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations so please do continue that and in case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video, you will find a link below and if you click that, you will find a blog there and there you will find more information about it. And in case you are liking these kind of blogs and videos, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.